Today I'm creating art with this ink. What's so special about this ink, you ask? Well, let's find out. Ooh. Uh, if you can't tell, maybe it's a little hard to tell, this ink glows in the dark. Let's play around with it. So obviously before we got started on creating anything, we have to do some tests to see how this ink works. It's a little it's a weird feeling. Okay, let's do some tests. I'm curious to see just how clear it is because I know a lot of the glow in the dark stuff has a sort of yellow tone as you can see with the bottle itself. Okay, so maybe just like a slight milkiness here. Nothing too crazy. I am curious also, can I mix this ink into water? Can I mix it into watercolors? That's probably something else I should do some tests on. It looks like everything we've put down so far is actually still wet with the glow-in-the-dark ink, so we might have a little bit of an extended drying time. So with that being said, I'm going to let this dry and I will get back to you guys in a few minutes when it is done. So as you can see, I've made a couple of additions to our test, mainly this circle right here. So I actually tested our glow in the dark just to see if, if the application was good enough. So I added this super duper thick circle and as it dried, it kind of separated and did some weird stuff. So I'm a little concerned about it, but let's go ahead and do a quick test and see what our glow in the darkness looks like. The thicker application that I added on later definitely helped with the glow and you can barely see the, I guess, thin application, but it does seem like that maybe one pass through with the brush just isn't going to be enough for our glow in the dark ink. Unfortunately, we are going to have to go through either a couple of times or put it on really thick and have this strange texture. So something to consider and play around with and hopefully we'll figure it out. Not only have I been dying for an excuse to go back to acrylics, but I have been dying for an excuse to paint over this discarded abstract painting from my abstract painting video. Some of you might recognize it. I have been hating it for months now, just waiting to paint over it, and here we are. I was so happy to do that, and thankfully I ended up really liking the results of this new painting. So after I put a lovely black coat, appropriately named Mars Black, over this this canvas, I got to painting space, which is something I'm not unfamiliar with when it comes to watercolors, but when it comes to acrylic painting, I've only done acrylic painting a very few times, and most of the time it's actually been abstract painting where I'm just creating random blobs and blending paint, but nothing super serious and nothing technical, so I felt really out of my comfort zone, but also really excited to try to paint space on this very long canvas. And then I was also very curious to see how our glow-in-the-dark ink was going to work on this acrylic canvas and was it going to create really pretty stars? Was it going to be a failure? Speaking of failures, I was three-fourths through this painting thinking it was probably the worst painting of space anyone has ever seen. But after I added all the speckled stars by splashing white acrylic paint all over the canvas, which was the most fun part, it really brought the whole thing together. Now, it might not be a perfect painting of space, but I really enjoyed it and it was a really fun experiment. So professional space painters, please forgive my noobness. I don't really plan on painting a lot of space in the future, but maybe one day I'll figure it out. Okay, so our glow in the dark aspect. I was actually really hoping to write a secret message on here that revealed itself when you turn the lights off, but after I realized just how obvious the glow in the dark ink was where you put it, I decided that a secret funny message that revealed itself in the dark wasn't going to be as funny if you could just read it in the daylight. So I just decided to keep it simple and stick with stars. And as we discovered with our test, you had to apply the glow in the dark ink on really Really thick. Otherwise, you just weren't going to get a good glow in the dark effect. So I went through with my dropper and put big fat chunky stars in. All right, let's look at the results. Mm -hmm. 
And in case you are wondering why some of the glow in the darks are ring-like, I was an idiot and applied the acrylic top coat, which reactivated the ink and kind of destroyed some of the glow in the dark stars, unfortunately. So maybe I did just want an excuse to make another acrylic abstract painting, or maybe I just wanted to incorporate the glow in the dark ink in some sort of subtle way that wasn't illustrative. I was really trying to rack my brain to be creative with this glow in the dark ink, and the best I could think of was maybe someone had ghost hands and they touched some art and they got their ectoplasm stuck on the art and now it's all goopy and there's handprints on it. I just really wanted to embrace the transparency but also mysterious like quality of this glow in the dark ink. So what I decided to do was create an abstract painting. If you guys know my abstract paintings, I'm obsessed with these swirly gradients of color. They're just really fun, almost meditative to make. And then I foolishly attempted to put the glow in the dark ink directly on my hands to create a handprint. I pretty much knew it was not going to work at all, but you, you can't you can't blame me for trying. I just thought it would be really cool to have my actual handprints on the art, but of course, when I drenched my hands in the ink and then put them on the painting, uh, just like the tips of my fingers and maybe a blob here or there from my palms went onto the painting, hands might be the hardest thing for an artist to draw, but thankfully handprints are one of the easiest, so I was not worried at all about recreating some handprints. So again, I used my dropper to apply the glow in the dark ink because I needed a very thick application, unfortunately, or it just wasn't going to glow. So I drew my handprints with the dropper and then applied some little dots here and there just to add a splattery fun effect to it. So this is a really silly and simple idea, but I think it turned out really fun and playful and cute. Okay, let's get into actual illustrating and create something with watercolor and add a glow-in-the-dark flare. So I had a few ideas, but I didn't want to go right away to the basic ghost idea. But I mean, to be honest, the ghost idea is still on the table because how can I resist cute little ghosties? I guess something I could do is maybe the portrait of someone's face. They look normal, and then maybe once the lights are turned off, either their eyes and mouth glow, or maybe I can give them like a skeleton or something. I really just want to make sure that I incorporate our glow in the dark in a way that, I guess, uses the transparency of the ink as well as the glow in the dark. I was also thinking, instead of just focusing on maybe like ghosts or something, we could do like... Uh, an ocean scene. So we have our ocean and maybe inside the ocean we have like ghost fish or like I said I wasn't gonna do ghosts yet here we are doing ghost fish. Um, here's a ghost shark. Boo! <laughs> it would be really interesting just to have the ocean full of these white transparent fish. I could even give them skeletons underneath the transparency of the glow in the dark and then Oh, well, actually might be really fun. I really, like like I said, I really do want to play around with the transparency of our ghosts going over the character that we drew, even though I'm pretty sure that ink activated the watercolors. So I'm going to have to be really careful if I go with something like that, just to make sure that I don't smear our watercolors, because that would be very sad. And then maybe we even have little ghosts sticking out of the floorboards like little worms or something. <laughs> Unless we created a character that was a ghost and we completely did all of her skin out of the glow in the dark ink. But what would we do? Would she wear clothes? Okay, I think those are our ideas. I'm probably just going to end up going with this girl dancing with ghosts. I really love the little ghosts sticking out of the floorboards. I think that's really silly and fun. So let's go with this. 
As much as I wanted to avoid doing the typical ghost idea with this illustration, I just thought it was the most fun and interesting idea, and I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. I mean, the illustration turned out really well, but the glow-in-the-dark ink left a lot to be desired, as they say. I bought this ink the same day that the average artist posted her glow-in-the-dark paint video. If you haven't seen that, I will put a link in the description. She stumbled upon some glow-in-the-dark paint that was apparently much more vibrant or I don't know what the word for uh, glow-in-the-dark is. Phosphorescent, is that correct? It says that on the ink bottle. Oh, luminescent. It was a lot more luminescent than this ink, unfortunately for me. So I kind of put this video off and I was really excited after I saw her video and then I tested mine and I was just like, Th that's all you got, buddy? That that That's all you got? The glow in the dark also fades away after you turn the lights off in seconds. Like you don't even get a full minute to see this glow in the dark. It immediately starts to fade away, which is so disappointing. But I mean, a gimmick's a gimmick, right? I mean, if it was very bright and lasted forever, would that really make me want to use this anymore in my art? Probably not. If we're being honest, it was just something really fun and silly to play around with once. And I will never think about it ever again because it was just a very silly but fun gimmick. Would I recommend you go out and spend $30? That's right, I said $30 for this little bottle of glow-in-the-dark ink. Honestly, no. Maybe go to the average artist video and see what kind of paint she used. It seems much more reliable. But for now, save your dollars. Go buy three Copic markers instead. Okay, let's talk about our character that I'm drawing. So I didn't want to go too cliche and make her into a witch because I was already making glow-in-the-dark ghosts, but I did have a little fun with her outfit. She's definitely a little spooky. She's goth, but she's very cute. I put a lot of snake tattoos on her. I don't know why I focused on snakes. But later on, I have a snake tattoo around her neck, one wrapped around her arm, one going around her belly button, and on her leg. So she likes snakes. I don't, I don't know. She's very cute. Let's talk about the ink. Um, so applying it was a disaster. I couldn't see anything I was applying, and even when I tilted my view to see where it was wet, I still could barely see anything. I really wanted to give the ghosts some faces, but I decided that I was just going to keep them as some ghostly, spooky figures and not so much a cute ghost. I wasn't sure how much I was applying and in the end it just turns out really blotchy and kind of sad and it was a fun gimmick. It was fun to play around with but I think maybe if you just want to do something simple like words, stars, or handprints. I mean technically this is ink so it was probably meant for more calligraphy or something but I decided to turn it into an art form. Is that my bad? Oh absolutely but I didn't see any glow-in-the-dark paint. I just happened to see the ink, so I ran with it. It's fine, we, we had fun. Okay, let's look at the results. And that is it for our glow in the dark ink. I hope you guys enjoyed me playing around with different ways to use it. Have you used this ink before? Let me know in the comments. All right, that is it. I'll see you guys in the next one. But before I go, I have to thank my amazing patrons. Okay, that sounded sarcastic, but you guys are seriously amazing. Do you want coloring pages, secret sketches, and early access to my videos? Check out the link in the description if you want to become a patron. I cannot thank you guys enough for all the support. Okay, bye.